Hemingway with admirers and a silver marlin in Havana Harbour, 1934. One of the illustrations in Anthony Burgess's Ernest Hemingway and His World. The caption to this photograph reads The Pilar, ostensible vessel of war against Nazis as well as fish. Hemingway and Bumby at Key West. The start of ambitious fishing. In Key West, he found something bigger than those woods. <laughs> the wide, deep sea crammed with tarpon, red snapper, amberjack and barracuda. He became a passionate fisherman. And here is the Key West house. Key West was maritime, tropical, relaxed, a bit decrepit, hot and saltily humid. Sailors fought in bars full of rumba music. The place suited Hemingway.
This is, in my view, possibly one of the best, if not the best, accounts of Hemingway and his life, his contribution to literature. It's a Thames and Hudson book uh, by Anthony Burgess, lavishly illustrated. The Hemingway Tune, writes Burgess, was a new and original contribution to world literature. He is in the ears of all young people who set out to write. And the Hemingway Code of Courage, the Hemingway hero and his stoic holding on against odds, have exerted an influence beyond literature. Though the insufficiencies of the man eventually maimed his work, Hemingway at his best is a seminal force, as considerable as that of Joyce or Faulkner or Scott Fitzgerald. And even at his worst, he reminds us that to engage literature, one first has to engage life. Ernest Hemingway and His World by Anthony Burgess